Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Robert Winters, and it's April 16th, the day after tax day uh, in the year of our Lord 2024. Um, I missed the last one. <laughs> it has been, been largely swamped by one too many things to take care of. But, um, you know, we're time to do some catching up. Um, I hope I'm not the only one in the room that's um, that was busy actually doing his taxes right up until April 15th. Uh, I think though actually we do get an extra day or two of uh, leeway because of uh, Patriots Day in Massachusetts. But anyway, I didn't want to go past the 15th, so I'm done with that. So, but uh, you know, coupled with that, plus a lot of my other uh, duties, uh, owning a three family house in Cambridge, like I have to disassemble a washing machine and, put a new roof on the house, which we did recently. So, you know, there's uh, a lot of stuff going on uh, around here. Um, anyway, uh, so just catching up with things. Um, I thought I'd mention just a couple of things that were going on around town just this past weekend that was actually kind of, kind of fun and nice, um, just worth mentioning. Some of the people that are, who I'm familiar with uh, put together these things they call stuff swaps. And there was a really successful one. It was over at the... Um, community center over on calendar street um kind of they used the whole gymnasium was big was very very well attended this is one of those uh, events where people you know provide housewares clothing all sorts of stuff uh and uh you know sometimes it's sort of the usual people you expect to show up bringing stuff and picking up stuff but this one was, was particularly good i guess it was on saturday uh in that there were just a lot of people uh including a lot of low-income people from around the Riverside neighborhood and elsewhere who came there. And, you know, people were, there was a lot of people staffing it and there were, was a lot of good stuff. And, uh, um, and I think it was really uh, very appreciated uh, by everybody who participated in it. I think it, I, it was interesting that I saw a few vehicles with, um, compost loaded up on the back of the vehicles when I got there because I think the city of Cambridge Recycling Division was also hosting a, a free comp finished compost giveaway up by the library. So people were sort of, <laughs> it was one of those really classic Cambridge days, you know, where, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, people are sort of hitting, they've learned block parties or anything so much, but stuff swaps, compost pickups, uh, et cetera. You know, meanwhile, I was sitting there fretting over my taxes. So anyway, it was pretty good. Um, something else I thought I might mention was, um, you know, I don't usually have time or I didn't have time, but I've been trying to make more time lately. But I used to like to go to a lot of community meetings, neighborhood associations, uh, things like that over the years, you know, which is kind of where I think the first one I went to East Cambridge, where actually somebody literally looked glared at me and said you're not from around here are you <laughs> you know and sometimes that happens but um anyway on uh, i think it was this past couldn't say maybe wednesday there was a um the cambridge port neighbors association uh put together a kind of a novel thing rather than having the usual meeting where somebody's in the front pontificating or uh you know conducting a meeting what they did is they just invited a lot of various entities to be there just to you know interact with people and take questions and uh, do such things so there were representatives from the city's new um, care the what they call care program uh, which is out of the community safety department which is the brand new department that was created for the purpose of providing uh, non-uniform uh, you know non-police response Right, it's still coordinated through the um, 911 system and works cooperatively with the police department. But anyway, they're still, you know, they're just sort of finding their sea legs right now. Uh, so it was very nice to have there were three or four representatives of them who were there. I got to speak with them at length, which was really delightful. Um, but for me, the, the real highlight was uh, I hadn't seen some of my good friends who were affiliated with the Central Square Business Improvement District, the Central Square bid. Um, and just to kind of catch up to speed on some of this is that Central Square bid was established uh, five years ago 
um, you know, before COVID, uh, as you know, it was dreamed about for 20 years, and then miraculously came into existence with the blessing of the required percentage of property owners in Central Square to essentially tax themselves. <laughs> so to support uh, supplemental services like you know extra trash collection and cleanups and just a lot of things. And anybody who's been through Central Square in the last five years has seen the you know the orange vested Central Square ambassadors who've been incredibly helpful. And of course, you know, they got established in 2019 and then they weren't even around for a year when COVID kicked in. And then they really were the, that was the entity that really allowed Central Square to really navigate COVID um, very, very well. I mean, no flies on the city of Cambridge. City of Cambridge did a great job in coordinating services and actually even helping. I thought one of the most creative things of all was how, you know, we can't, city can't simply subsidize local businesses, but if those local businesses are restaurants and they can't have patrons because of COVID, as was the case early on, the city contracted with those restaurants to provide meals that the city could then make available to people who were in need. Uh, and indirectly, the city was able to keep a lot of those businesses going. Uh, so, you know, nice job, City of Cambridge, <laughs> and, and city manager and everybody else in the city staff who helped pull that off. That was great. But the Central Square Business Improvement District was, um, you know, they were the ones who were coordinating the construction of a lot of the outdoor dining. They even created a bicycle thoroughfare through there on both sides of the way. And, um, and really helped everybody get through the whole crisis, real crisis, not just the, people love to throw that word crisis around uh, these days, but that was a pr real crisis at the time. Anyway, I was, and they also created Starlight Square uh, as a, an outdoor venue when you could only have outdoor venues. And that helped provide a lot of hope and uh, uh, continuity for Central Square during that period. Um, but I, you know, COVID is for the most part behind us now. And I, and the way it works with business improvement districts is that um, they get, have to get re-upped every five years. You know, so I thought, well, okay, what have you done for me lately? I thought maybe a lot of the property owners were going to be saying, well, COVID's behind us and we can just lean on the city services and no problem, right? Uh, and I thought maybe the, the bid would just disappear. And in fact, word came out several weeks ago that, in fact, they got re-upped. So we'll be, they'll be around for another five years. Now, the reason why I happen to be mentioning it right now was that the Cambridgeport Neighbors Association, when they had this event uh, down at 150 Erie Street in the senior housing bill in the common room there, um, I got to talk with uh, Michael Monestein and uh, another gentleman, Hussein from the, of the bid, and uh, you know, just get up to speed. I, I, you know, just don't see them as much anymore. I just you know, not up to their offices as much. I don't run into them on the street as much as I used to. Uh, and um, anyway, we kind of got caught up to speed, and I was really quite impressed. Uh, they're they really they they had these like brand new little brochures that they put together. You know, uh, a new year in the square. You know, very nice, nicely put together little bold out bit here, you know, giving a little bit of the history of the um, the last five years and and how we got through. But uh, if I might summarize the um, the current tone, uh, and I hope I do this reasonably well, it would really I would characterize as they're looking to be um, uh, more creative, really, and saying, OK, so we managed to do Starlight Square and that was a pretty important institution, even though it had been in last year or so has become a bit on the shabby side. Well, that'll go away. So uh, what happens in replacement, we were, that's as yet unknown. Um, but one thing that there are plans, there are current plans um, to reinvent what we used to call the Central Square World's Fair. And I don't know when and how that's going to happen, but basically, rather than being confined to uh, kind of one-off events in Starlight Square, they want to do sort of, you know, I guess you could also call it a one-off 
of uh, uh, where you basically close down Mass Ave and turn it into one big rock, rock and party. Um, the cent city will also do the uh, the citywide dance party that always took place in front of City Hall. The bid, um, coupled with Matt Nelson from the city manager's office and others, they coordinated that uh, because Mary Ellen's not doing it no more. And, um, you know, and that was last year. And uh, they'll be doing that again as well. So we should be seeing a Central Square World's Fair. We should be seeing the city, um, the city's dance party again. But I think I think what these what these folks are doing is they're really trying to be even more creative than that. And they put out a I don't have a link to it here right now, but they put out a, um, a survey where they're trying to basically get maximum input from people. So. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to find that. It's been going around on various listservs and such uh, to provide some input as to what you would like to see coming out of Central Square and the bid in the um, in the days to come. You know, so in other words, the business improvement district is not all about orange jacketed ambassadors assisting and cleaning up and whatever. I mean, there's also some coordination of events. Um, I always like the point out that that there's actually been some partnering up of vacant spaces with prospective tenants where the bid has helped to marry those those interests um, so there's a lot more to it than just basically cleaning up the trash and you know and the human waste and nips and hypodermic needles and all the really more problematic things that we we often see in the square so anyway I thought that was um, kind of an important important thing. Uh, now, so one thing that was actually kind of my, the highlight of my week last week, I'd have to say, was, so we all went out um, in one form or another to view the eclipse that was taking place uh, up in the sky. <laughs> and uh, I ended up, I started at Toscanini's with Gus and, and then wandered my way up uh, through Central Square. I had my little, you know, glasses. And um, every anybody I know who was looking up and sort of like squinting or whatever, I said, stop, stop, here, use these, use these. So I kind of helped, uh, I don't know, scores of people to actually see the eclipse. But I ended up over at, uh, in front of the main library on Broadway uh, for the bulk of it. And, um, and it was great. I mean, it really was fun just to have all these people get together for this sort of amazing event you know we didn't get the totality as such but we got 92.6 percent coverage which was pretty good but i have to say for me the highlight wasn't the eclipse it was i ran into a former harvard extension school student of mine who happens to teach at the high school who said hey i know you and we chatted briefly and he turned and he pointed out that uh, were the bulk of um his class was out there uh, viewing the eclipse. And I said, what class is this? And that was the good part. All right, so um, he was in my multivariable calculus class at Harvard. And, and I learned for the first time, I didn't know about this, that Cambridge Rinch and Latin High School actually has a multivariable calculus class, which, you know, I have a fair number of high school age students in my courses. Uh, and even Lexington doesn't offer a multivariable calculus course. Um, they have to come to my course uh, in order to get that. Uh, but CRLS has, I think there are 24 students in a, in a multivariable calculus course. So, you know, I mean, I think there's, you know, been a fair amount of criticism, some of it very well founded about the way mathematics is carried out in the Cambridge public schools. It was certainly this controversy over the cessation or partial cessation of eighth grade algebra, which was really like a real kick in the butt from Bob, Bob Moses and the algebra project, which started in Cambridge. Um, but I think they're fixing that problem, or at least they're on the road to fixing that problem. Uh, and I would not have expected to hear that, in fact, uh, CRLS had actually put together an advanced college level mathematics class um, conducted at the high school. And I, and I was really, really happy to hear it. You know, apparently they had six students last year. They get 24 students now. So it seems to be well situated. It is interesting when you go scouting around on the Cambridge Public Schools 
website under curriculum, whatever, there's not a single mention of this, which I thought, come on, folks, you know, toot your horn a little bit here. You did something good. And, um, you know, I mean, what are you afraid? People are going to say it was not equitable or some other what are, some of that other nonsense that have basically been standing in the way of good mathematics education. So anyway, I was I thought that was wonderful. Um, and I'll just briefly mention one other thing, which was kind of kind of the comic event of, uh, uh, I guess, two weeks ago. And so, you know, sometimes I put together uh, April Fool's versions of Cambridge Civic Journal, and I just didn't, I just didn't have it in me to do it this year. Um, I did one little blurb, you know, making fun of um, uh, Councillors Wilson and Councillor Pickett, uh, <laughs> reminiscent of the great Wilson Pickett, you know, um, going to wait till the midnight hour, right? But it was just a little joke, you know. But something which really has been left a little bit of the internet a little abuzz was that one of our um, young counselors, namely Mr. Azim, apparently wanted to do a, an April Fool's joke by, you know, doing a kind of a tired old bit that even I have done when I did, you know, Somerville, I think, what did I write? Cambridge invades Somerville or Somerville invades Cambridge. So he so basically he borrows this theme about Boston to, excuse me, Cambridge to annex Boston. All right. Nice joke. I know it's a nice joke. I've done it myself, right? But unlike me, who spends all of zero dollars for a joke, Councillor Azim dips into his campaign finance camp funds and to the tune of $6,100 in order to pay a, a designer to design this ad for the MBTA, you know, like I suppose it was on buses or subways or both. And um, and then five thousand dollars in order to uh, to actually put it out there uh, to a group called I think Outfront Media for the MBTA ads. I thought to myself, boy, are we showing some serious hubris here? I mean, dropping sixty one hundred dollars, uh, you know, to do this, you know. And I guess some one person who I respect says, well, they could write it off as a legitimate campaign ex expense. But I thought to myself, really? So what? Four months after the municipal election, uh, he basically has this bunch of pocket money that he can just sort of throw around for his amusement. And I thought, well. I don't know about Mr. Azim. Uh, he's either bored with the job or arrogant or both or more. I don't know. I, I thought it was funny. And believe me, I like a good joke, you know, but I thought, come on, get serious. Um, anyway, um, there, I don't follow, um, you know, just I was speaking about multivariable calculus class um, at CRLS. I don't usually follow the Cambridge Public Schools that closely. I I would like to. Uh, I mean, I I'm a teacher for <laughs> for goodness sake, right? Maybe I should be doing that more, but um, I really uh, haven't, you know. But um, there was some it's some interesting rumblings going on here, and I can't don't quite know what to make of it all. You know, sure they have ongoing contracts, negotiations, and whatever, and you know, even there has some funny business going on to be sure but um i there's a, there was a harvard crimson article came out uh that basically announced that uh cambridge public school superintendent victoria greer was asked to resign by the cambridge school committee now i find it curious that the only place i've seen this story has been in the cambridge uh, in the harvard crimson and I thought to myself, well, why would that be, you know? And I don't know, but it may well be that it's not true. That's a possibility. Or it may well be that, I think this is maybe more likely, that it is true, but something that was spoken in executive session got leaked to some Harvard Crimson reporter who then put it out as a news item. And I have to say, having been following city council affairs for 30 years, right? Or almost 30 years, we really put more than 30 years, but putting it on the web uh, for over 25 years. Uh, one of my hard, fast rules has always been that 
something that's if I, if I find out about something it's told to me in confidence uh, or if I know it to be a matter that is subject to executive session, I would never put it out there. So I, I'm perplexed by this. So, you know, so was the Harvard Crimson story accurate? Uh, is it true? Maybe in a few months, nobody will care because, you know, everything will have resolved itself. But um, I just thought that was curious. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, there's still some other um, upheaval going on. I, my understanding is that there's a principal at the Graham and Park School who's, there's some people love this person and other people hate this person. And then they've been going into the, the quasi press in order to basically have a little bit of a, a pissing match about this, which I think is kind of unfortunate. Um, but so I don't know, I, you know, I think it's time maybe a few of us I don't know if I can find the time to do it, but a few of us have to maybe spend a little more time paying attention to the Cambridge schools um, and just to find out what's up uh, and, uh, you know, and, and treat it um, accordingly. All right. Um, okay. So, ah, here's another item. I hope, hope I'm not sounding too random today, but I'm feeling a little random. So one of the things I happen to mention sort of offhandedly, I, maybe the last time we did a show, was that I was, uh, I was, I am now a duly elected member of the Cambridge Ward 6 uh, Democratic City Committee, uh, thanks to a write-in, a very, very, very tiny little write-in campaign where I just sent out some email messages. Apparently you only need five votes in a, you know, if they're, if they're, if the slate candidates are fewer then the number of seats you're entitled to, then you can you can just get added on with as few as five votes. So I got my I got more than that. I got plenty more than that actually. So I became a duly elected member of the Ward Six Democratic City Committee. Now um, I didn't think too much about it. I just figured it's, it's not a bad idea to have a little bit of input where it's appropriate. And I will admit that I have some concerns about the low, at least locally the the uh, direction that the uh, Democratic Party may be going in. I am not a socialist, nor do I believe in, that socialists should be uh, as involved with Democratic Party politics as they would like to. They should start their own party <laughs> or, or go have a party somewhere. Um, but um, I thought I just want to be a participant. But, you know, as is often the case with these small organizations, um, just getting people to serve as officers, uh, you know, like to be who wants to be chair of a neighborhood association. It's not like people are battling for it. It's usually you're begging somebody to take on the role. So uh, Yulia uh, O'Connell took on the role of chair of our ward committee. And then they were saying, okay, we need a vice chair. I think one fellow, Jonathan, um, sort of acknowledged as long as he didn't have to be there regularly. Uh, and then they needed a secretary and a treasurer. So now I am officially the secretary of the Ward 6 uh, Democratic City Committee <laughs> for, what, for what it's worth. You know. um, one thing I, I wanted to mention, is I, 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 don't, I don't really pay much attention to uh, Democratic City Committee stuff. I think in a presidential election year, they probably do play a, an important role in terms of helping orchestrate campaigns, not only here, but I know they tend to ship a lot of people up to New Hampshire to try and uh, uh, um, influence the vote up there in presidential elections. At least they've done that in the last few elections that I know. Um, but you know, for the most part, I don't really understand what Democratic City Committee does, or the Republican City Committee for that matter either. Um, but one notion, and I may have mentioned this in a, pre a previous program, that I've been having is not so much a party based ward system, but um, I know that, you know, though we haven't heard much lately from the charter review people, you know, they, they submitted their report to the uh, Cambridge city council and sooner or later, they will have to take up the matter of potential uh, modifications to the charter so that they could send a petition to the state legislature, which would then come back to the voters or really come back to the city council and then the voters. Um, 
and you know some of some of what's proposed was okay you know like reformatting uh, of the whole document um, and there are some things that came with it which I think are just deplorable um, and one but one of the things that I really am sort of interested in is they have a proposal to create something that they're entitling citizen assemblies problem is the way they've structured it in their proposal is just wrongheaded you know basically it would be citizens assembly that would be appointed by either the mayor or um the city council and i thought well this isn't a citizen assembly if basically you know the previous elected people are the only ones who gets this to decide who's on it or what they're supposed to talk about that's just ridiculous um but you know, prior to the planning charter, we did have ward councilors, and I'm not promoting the idea of going back to having ward councilors. Uh, I like the fact we have proportional representation, but I, I do understand that after 1940, the, the role of wards as sort of citizen organizing mechanisms vanished. It was somewhat recreated in the form of neighborhood associations, I, I could argue. Um, but I think maybe we would benefit by actually having some kind of a recreation of wards as citizen assemblies, not under the control of the city council, not to be appointed by the mayor, but basically you could run for it and be a member of the ward committee. And um, and it's one of the things I think in the early goings of the, city, the uh, charter review committee, I made reference to creating a farm system for people to sort of be future candidates for city council school committee. And that's actually what I had in mind was to create some kind of a award structure where people could kind of get their feet wet, uh, develop, uh, you know, some sea legs so that they can actually uh, consider taking on more substantial roles potentially as future city councilors and, and whatnot. And also to have a, a venue where people could actually discuss some things and then maybe make bring proposals to the city council for action because ward committees I don't believe should have any actual power but they should have some influence so anyway that's my secret reason for wanting to be on a ward committee was just to sort of you know float that idea in a few circles so I'm this is one of those little circles I'm floating that idea right now so um anyway um I think I'm going to take, as we often do, the artificial little break here, uh, you know, to for this half hour, and then um, we'll all come back and we'll, we'll cut it in piece, two pieces, uh, and we'll continue in a couple of minutes. So anyway, so for a very brief moment, thank you for viewing Cambridge Inside Out.